It was a fantastic day on Wall Street as we saw the S&P 500 close higher by 1.71%. Not only that, but the consistency of the move was truly impressive. All 11 sectors were up at least 1% here today. Uh, that is quite rare to see. Uh, also, 96% of the components within the S&P 500 closed higher today. That is also incredibly rare. So uh, you had a very strong chance that if you were long the stock market today, uh, you ended up with gains in your own portfolio. So we'll take a look at all of that, see what it means for our posture. Then we'll get into our trade application example where I wanted to focus on fading this move. So while I certainly look at this move as constructive, um, you know, sometimes you can go a little bit too far too fast, and that has me wondering about one technology stock in particular. So I'll show you how to do a bearish trade on it. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Z. It's October 14th, 2021. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to go over to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below in our description area and make sure you're signed up for our email distribution list where you can get access to these emails to be notified when these videos get posted. Also at the bottom of the emails, you'll see any stocks within the S&P 500 that are giving you overbought and oversold cluster signals. In addition to that, we're heavy users of Twitter. My handle is at Brandon Van Z. I would encourage you to follow me if you're not doing so already. Also, I really appreciate those of you that click like and retweet on these market outlook related tweets in particular. And then last but not least, we do have a presence on Facebook. Feel free to join us at that web address you see in the logo in front of you. All right, let's jump into today's trade activity. And as is often the case, whenever we have a move of over 1%, either up or down, I like to start with this chart, 6D, for those of you that are premium members of Market Scholars following along with your own charting package at home. Um, this particular chart will give us a sense of recent volatility. And as you can see here, this is quite the green bar uh, that was established today. Uh, if you're new to reading this particular chart, understand that the, 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 the black line that you see here is effectively 0% move. So if you have a green bar, it means that it was a positive day. If you have a red bar, it means it was a negative day. And uh, the size of that bar will give you a sense of how often we get moves like this. And this was a pretty rare move today. Um, this was actually the best day since going all the way back here to March 5th. This candle right here on the uh, 20th of May, or this, uh, this bar right here on the 20th of May, uh, was very close, uh, but it was just shy of today's move. It was 1.69% move on that day, just shy of today's 1.71% move. So we would have to go all the way back uh, to this candle back on March 5th, right there is that candle, uh, to see a day quite like today. So that was impressive because as most of you are aware, unless you've been under a rock lately, uh, we've had some struggles in the stock market since the beginning of September. You can see that we've kind of been stuck in this pattern of lower highs and lower lows here. Now all of a sudden, we might start having this conversation about, hey, is that uh, a, a head and shoulders pattern there, an inverted head and shoulders pattern in this case, where per possibly we'd have a reversal to the upside. So we wanna keep our eye on that. Uh, naturally, when we have a big up day like we did today, uh, you will see the VIX fall, and that was the case here today. In fact, the VIX is back down to 16, just like that. Remember, we were just talking about the VIX here above 25 um, at the end of September. Uh, and so it's fallen tremendously from 25 all the way down to 16 as the market has found some stability here uh, all of the sudden. So uh, a reminder of what I've mentioned to you guys um, quite often here in recent presentations, which is, yes, October can come with some nerves in the market as there has been a lot of market crashes throughout the history in the month of October. But what uh, October is equally notorious for is uh, putting in a, a bottom of sorts. Uh, and so maybe that's what we're trying to go through the process of right now. Uh, maybe that's all that the market needed to do was a bit of an exhale there. Uh, I'm not quite sure we're done with it yet, so I don't want to get too gung-ho about this move, but I do also have to acknowledge that this was a very impressive day and breadth was tremendous. Let's talk about that a little bit more by coming up here to the uh, Market Watch tab 
Here is the heat map of the S&P 500 today, and you can see green, green, green as far as the eye can see. Some big movers out there today, including dividend aristocrat Walgreens, uh, kind of led the market here today, or at least was one of the key leaders, up 7% here today. We also saw some positive news. Some of you saw me tweeting about uh, Southwest Gas, ticker symbol SWX, as Carl Icahn came out with a tender offer, uh, kind of getting a little bit hostile with their board all of a sudden as they've been kind of uh, you know, going back and forth with one another here in the last couple of weeks. We actually got pretty darn lucky with that particular stock in my dividend growth investing class as we just purchased it about three weeks ago, having no idea uh, there was gonna be uh, this proxy fight uh, upon us. So sometimes uh, you get lucky and uh, that's a good example of that. So happy to see uh, that particular activity as well. But you can see lots of green out here. Uh, we saw some uh, good movement out of some of those technology stocks, PayPal, NVIDIA, uh, LAM Research. Those stocks were up like 4% here today. Even the, the big kahunas of Microsoft up 2% and Apple up 2%. That's a sign of a bit more of a risk on type of an appetite that we have there for the market. Also see some of the more cyclical areas. Uh, UPS was up 4% today. Carrier Global, some of the uh, heat heating and HVAC types of companies up about 4%. Eaton and um, Emerson Electric, who recently had a new reorganization announcement uh, here earlier this week. Another dividend aristocrat there up 3% in that case. So uh, you can see some of the banks also. Uh, Bank of America up 4% today. Remember, the banks are in focus this week due to them kind of leading the way with earnings announcements. So really, the rarities on the board are where the, the, the pink areas are. And there we do have a couple of financials as well. U.S. Bank and, and Wells Fargo struggling a little bit. Boeing had some um, specific news there where they had some uh, parts of their airplanes that they need to kind of uh, some fuselage and some uh, fasteners uh, apparently that they need to uh, look into and, 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 and perhaps find a solution towards. So that one had some company specific news there. And then you also see Oracle kind of all by itself up here in tech land with a little bit of a pink shade there as well. And put a pin in that because we'll be talking about that stock a little bit later. Uh, before we do, let's take a look here at our uh, index watch as well. I wanted to kind of reiterate what I mentioned uh, here in the intro, which is uh, we had a 96% uh, uh, up day here in terms of market breadth if you're looking specifically within the S&P 500. So out of the 500 stocks there, 481 of them closed in the green today. Uh, only 23 closed in the red. So uh, really impressive across the board. Doesn't really matter what sector you were in. Chances are your portfolio is shining bright green here today. So uh, it's been a while since we've had one of these days. Uh, I think we've kind of earned it. Uh, whether this is the start of a new leg towards the end of the year in that Santa Claus rally uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, uh, usually the market doesn't let us off quite that easy. Uh, then again, uh, this is about the time of the year where we find those kind of temporary bottoms and uh, start uh, marching forward towards a more enthusiastic close of the year. So it certainly would be possible. Uh, it is somewhat amusing that uh, this big day that we haven't had since March 5th is occurring when uh, David is on vacation. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, we joke that typically when David goes on vacation, uh, the market starts crumbling. And so it would be nice if he kind of turned that curse around. As I was joking with my class earlier today, perhaps we could all chip in for him uh, to take regular vacations uh, if that meant that the stock market was going to now start rallying when he was gone. So uh, a reminder that he will be gone for the next about week and a half or so uh, and therefore uh, won't be doing the market outlook video tomorrow uh, either. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here now at uh, a more normalized chart, uh, our, our traditional pathway looking at chart 4B. And as you can see here, We've got a lot of green popping up on the board here all of a sudden. Uh, we've got the S&P 500 up 1.71% today. Take a look at that. It's our first time closing above that 30-day moving average since going all the way back here to mid-September. So that was an impressive move. Not only was the percentage move strong and the best since March 5th, 
but how we closed was equally as impressive. We closed near the high of the day, and we easily closed above the moving average. A lot of times you kind of approach that moving average on a big day, kind of like over here, but then it kind of sells off. You have that long upper shadow, and then that ends up being a resistance area, and we kind of fade that move there. So this was a much more impressive close in my eyes than what we saw on the first attempt back here, and hopefully we can make some progress to the upside as a result of that. But here's kind of what I was mentioning before. You can see it a little bit better, where you might be able to go on record saying that this is a bit of an inverted head and shoulders pattern with our left shoulder there, our head right there, and our right shoulder uh, over here. And that is traditionally a more bullish uh, reversal pattern to, to the upside. So don't be surprised at all if we can take out uh, yearly highs by the end of 2021. Uh, it's not all that far away when it's all said and done here. Uh, on, uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, they're even one-upping the S&P 500. Notice that the S&P 500 has a weekly bullish posture because that green line is rising, but it hasn't yet gone above the 50th percentile. It's still at 38, whereas the Dow Jones is back to rising and it is above the 50th percentile. It's at 51 at this moment in time. Similar to the S&P 500, you do have a close near the high of today's uh, candle. Uh, and you can see that uh, you know that's the first time that we've closed cleanly above that 30-day moving average since going all the way back here to the beginning of September. There were a couple of times here along the way where we attempted to kind of uh, close right at the moving average, but today was a clean break above that moving average, so a very strong sign there. Notice that background color is that dark green color as opposed to the light green that we see over here on the S&P 500. So a 1.56% move there on the blue chip index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's go ahead and talk about the NASDAQ composite now in the lower left-hand corner here. And you can see that that was actually our leader again here today, which is a promising sign. Remember, the NASDAQ is a little bit more um, speculative because it oftentimes holds your innovative and growth-oriented companies to a larger degree than some of these other indices. So to see it up 1.73%, narrowly beating the S&P 500 today, was a promising sign. However, there is a big difference to be aware of, which is we are still below a falling 30-day moving average there on the NASDAQ composite. So that is the only index that can make that claim. All of the three other indices here, as you can see, closed cleanly above the moving average. So from that perspective, you could still say that despite being today's winner, the NASDAQ composite continues to be the intermediate term laggard, and you can kind of recognize that in the label as well, 33 and rising on the NASDAQ composite is the lowest reading of these other uh, three charts that you see on the board there. So um, that's why, you know, when we talk about Oracle later on in the uh, video, um, you know, Oracle, of course, is a big NASDAQ composite stock. And so I was kind of looking for some weakness within that laggard index. So great to see it uh, leading today, but let's see how it acts once it approaches that moving average and whether it can actually cleanly break through there uh, or not. We have had a lot of, unfortunately, wear and tear on the technology uh, sector specifically in the last couple of months. I've been talking about a few standout performers there, including uh, Salesforce.com, which is a holding in our top-down trend trading class that hit a new all-time high here today. Uh, also, we had a nice little win in my swing trading class with MongoDB, and then also Bill.com in that same class just a week ago, showing some really good strength to the upside. So depending upon where you're picking and choosing within tech Technology. There are some stellar outperformers, but in general, technology as a sector um, has really kind of shown some uh, sell-off potential there with some of the bigger names uh, struggling a bit more. So uh, today was a promising sign. I'm happy to see it, and I hope it continues, uh, but we'll, we'll just have to take it a day at a time, as is always the case when we're looking at these more actively traded charts here. Uh, and then look at the uh, the Russell 2000. Oh, by the way, the, the NASDAQ composite, as you can see, light green background color. So it's similar to the S&P 500 there, where we have a weekly bullish posture. But the Russell 2000, the chart in the lower right-hand corner, 
matches that dark green color that we see with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In other words, strongly bullish posture there on the small cap index, Russell 2000. It was up 1.44% today, which was actually the smallest amount of these four indices. But as you are aware, if you've been watching these videos over recent weeks, the Russell 2000 has been the standout performer because it refused to go lower when the rest of the markets were. It was holding the line and going sideways. So today's move, while it might seem a little bit lackluster at only 1.44%, it wasn't playing catch up. The other indices were. So it makes the Russell 2000 um, the most interesting, in my opinion, uh, at this exact moment in time, and you can kind of read that through in the um, in the label there as well. Its intermediate line is at 55 and rising, and that is better than the other indices we see on the board, including the Dow Jones, which is not too far behind it at 51, but I do still consider the Russell 2000 the leader of this market right now. And that's a nice little bounce up and off of that 30 day moving average. Whereas the other moving averages were clearly going lower, this one's more of a sideways moving average here. And you can build upon that as we head towards the end of the year. So I kind of like the way that the Russell 2000 is setting up here all of a sudden. There could be some good opportunities there. In fact, we've been looking for those opportunities here in my factor-based swing trading class as we kind of head on over to the internet briefly. Um, I'll show you that on the factor selector here, the low size factor overtook momentum and value here over the past week. Remember, the low size factor was dead last as recently as August, uh, but has gone all the way up to number one in terms of these factors compared to one another. And that stability that we've been talking about for weeks now in the Russell 2000 is case in point as to why the low size factor is holding up as well as it has. And so uh, I presented a couple of small cap swing trades, uh, bullish trades to my, uh, my, my class here yesterday. Uh, if you're interested in checking out that recording, if you missed it the first time around and you are a plus or a premium member. So that was the big news on the factor selector this week is low size, the new king on top. And that was the first time since going all the way back here uh, to about end of August that um, they overtook momentum. Momentum was stuck there at the top for quite some time. So very nice move there out of low size. Low volatility, by the way, remained dead last. Remember, that's more of an interest rate story than anything else. There's a lot of utilities and REITs and consumer staples in the low volatility category that have struggled on a relative basis as a result of interest rates uh, rising uh, in recent weeks, however, we'll get to this in just a little bit, uh, interest rates have pulled back here uh, in the last three days. Uh, but leading up to those three days, we've had a big move higher in rates. And so that has kind of put a lid on any potential moves out of low volatility. Also, while we're over here on the internet, I always like to get a chance to say thank you to those of you that help support this market outlook presentation. Remember that this uh, may seem like it's just 30 minutes of your day when you're listening to it, but it actually takes up at least three hours of David and I's day, and we do it completely voluntarily. Uh, we don't, we've never made a penny off of these videos. I always try to be very upfront with you guys as to what our motivations are in doing the videos, and hopefully uh, our, our motivation is not only to educate you, that comes with the territory, uh, but also to hopefully benefit our actual premium business by getting the word out about our organization. And so, uh, you know, as long as you guys are open to the idea idea of helping promote us and you don't have to be a rah-rah cheerleader or anything like that. Just simply do one thing for us. All we ask for you is click like on Twitter. Uh, and when you do that, that helps uh, send the word out to your social networks. And we figure that's getting the word out about our organization to a much wider audience than David and I would be able to do on our own. So that's why we continually ask you to help support the video. Uh, if you want to see these free videos uh, here continued. Uh, and as long as we can get up and over 100 likes, uh, I'm happy to continue to do the videos. If we get less than 100 likes, then I'm less enthusiastic in doing it. And I really have to question
question whether it's worth the three hours that are, it chews up out of our day. So you guys have done a great job for me. I appreciate that. I appreciate all 101 of you that did that for me when I did the video on Tuesday. Let's keep that up. If you want these videos to continue, uh, all I have to all you have to do is is just click like for us there on Twitter. It takes less than five seconds out of your day to do that. So for many of you, that's a good trade off. That five seconds uh, for our three hours. Also, while we're over here, a reminder that I did teach my premium class today. I taught the, um, the, the question and answer class. So that uh, recording is now posted. Um, and uh, of course, David's out of the office, so uh, he didn't teach his class today, nor will he tomorrow. I'll be back in action on Monday uh, with the top-down trend trading class at 11 a.m. Eastern time, so a morning class there from me, and then an afternoon class for me as well, uh, options for long-term investors, where we just uh, got done locking in our 100th straight win from a selling puts perspective, and we'll hope to continue the good times going. Of course, tomorrow represents a big day for options traders as it is the expiration day for the month of October. So we're gonna have a lot more wins uh, tallied up uh, here as soon as tomorrow as we let them expire worthless into the weekend. Also, uh, real quick, you can see here in the popular recent post, there is a post here that's called Dividend Growth Investing Increases from September 2021. I always like to point out that that particular uh, blog is not hidden behind a paywall. So for those of you that are not plus or premium members of Market Scholars, you would still be able to access that, just like you're able to access the Market Outlook videos and the nine at nines and, and a few other free things that we offer out there. So if you uh, or somebody that you know is interested in dividend growth investing, feel free uh, to check out that post there to try to stay up to date on dividend increases, which like I mentioned here, on Twitter uh, just a moment ago, it was a busy afternoon here today for dividend increases. Uh, Sentient Technology with their 16th straight dividend increase. Uh, we also had Dividend King Northwest Natural Holdings uh, with their 66th consecutive year. Remember, once you're over 50 years in a row, you become a dividend king. And then we also had Aviant uh, raise their dividend 12%, which was either their 11th or 12th straight year of increases, depending upon uh, your resource there. But uh, anyway, um, that was those were three of them that just announced their increases this afternoon. So a busy afternoon for that sort of thing. Uh, there, but uh, anyway, um, you know, feel free to check out uh, my uh, question and answer session here today. We covered a lot of different things. If you're a premium member, uh, we talked about uh, preferred stocks here today, and my thoughts on you know smattering in some preferred stocks into a dividend growth investing mindset, and whether that would be useful or not. We also talked about iron ore stocks, including Cleveland Cliffs and uh, Masabi Trust, which is a very unique company. We also covered uh, RPM, which is a coatings uh, company that makes Rust-Oleum uh, and see if that might be an attractive dividend growth investing candidate. We also talked about marijuana stocks, uh, a whole pile of them, and, uh, and you know, wondering whether it would be useful to kind of put those together in a basket of sorts heading forward. Then we also talked about the idea of how uh, stock prices and options contracts somewhat get adjusted when a stock issues an ex-dividend. So lots of good stuff there. For those of you that are premium members, again, David won't be having his class tomorrow, so maybe you could fill in the time that you normally would spend with him by watching the recording from my class here today if you didn't get a chance to check that out live already. All right, let's go ahead and get back on track with some additional charts from Thinkorswim. Coming on over here and doing some 12 grid analysis now. Starting with chart 5A, this is our asset class 12 grid. And as you can see here, lots of green on the board. There's only two pink charts, and those are the two right there in the middle. Now remember the last time <coughs> I was with you on Tuesday, which was two days ago, I said be on the lookout for a snapback rally in those exact two charts, uh, which were the foreign bonds and the high yield bonds. And the reason I mentioned that or speculated that we could get a nice little rally out of those is because we kind of set off the fire here with um, long-term US Treasuries on Tuesday. Remember on Tuesday, we were looking at that candle right there 
on TLT, and I was saying that that was not a surprise given the fact that we had these oversold cluster signals there. And what was more surprising is the fact that we didn't get the same type of activity out of foreign bonds and high yield bonds. Well, here we are two days later, and that's exactly what got served up on the market. So congratulations to those of you who might have been bold enough to fade that move, <coughs> in other words, fade the selling, to buy those foreign bonds and those high yield bonds because we just had a heck of a two day rally out of both of those. And remember, that was based upon my thought that we were also getting oversold clusters on um, both foreign bonds and high yield bonds at the time when we were discussing that on Tuesday. And the fact that they did not rally at the same time we had a huge rally out of TLT led me to believe that they could very well be due for a rally. And there has been a very nice two-day rally out of both of those entities. However, we still haven't seen enough of a rally to change the posture in them. Um, and the reason for that is they were so oversold that despite the near or the, uh, the intermediate line rallying, it's still in the lower reversal zone, right? So you can see here in the label that it says 11 and rising, and over here it says 17 and rising. And so what that looks like in reality, if I right click and go to maximize sell, is you had these oversold cluster signals here and you had enough of a push in price here. This is a big move for bonds, but because we were in such the a deep territory there for the green line, it's rising right now, but it still hasn't emerged out of that low reversal zone yet. Notice that the green line was at its lowest point in over three months for HYG, and I would guess it's probably the same for the foreign bonds. Let me just back up a second. Here's BNDX now, and yes, that is the case. Notice that the green line is at its lowest level here a couple of days ago in the last three months. So despite this really nice rally that both of those uh, bond entities have had in the last two days because you were so deep in that low reversal zone there, even a rising green line has not gotten at us out of the, the low reversal zone yet. So remember, <coughs> whether you're in, uh, whether you're rising or falling in the low reversal zone, we still consider it to be bearish. And so that is where it stands right now. And that's where I think it, it deserves to be. In other words, my expectation when we get these oversold cluster signals is that we get a reversion to the mean type of a move, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to change the previous trend. And right now, that is still my assumption. Bonds have rallied nicely for the last two, three days, but they still haven't changed the downtrend yet. So I still wouldn't be aggressively buying into the bonds for a trend change. I think it would have been useful for you to buy into it two days ago when I mentioned it for a quick little swing trade, but that's different than a trend change from a kind of intermediate term perspective. So if we do start approaching these falling moving averages here on TLT, BNDX, or HYG, I think there's gonna be opportunities to fade that move and to do some bearish trades up there for those of you that will be bold enough to do it. But for those of you that caught the last couple of days here off of oversold territory in the bond market, congratulations. Uh, that was setting up just perfectly there for you to do just that. You can see that the reason that the bond market is rallying here is what I hinted at uh, here a moment ago when I mentioned that interest rates have sold off now for three days in a row. Those are some pretty big moves lower there on interest rates. You can see on TNX here, we did end at 1.51% there, uh, well off of where we were trading just four sessions ago. Now this is still an uptrend here. So just like I mentioned, you know, until we see otherwise, we assume bonds will be sold off of this reversion to the mean type of a move. You can make the same case for interest rates will be bought uh, once we start establishing some support here. We still have a rising 30-day moving average. We still have a, a strongly bullish posture with that dark green background color there uh, on rates themselves or yields themselves. So anyway, that's been a very dramatic movement within the market here uh, more recently and has caused a lot more kind of chaotic activity within uh, the market itself. You can see that the US dollar was effectively flat today, <coughs> but it had a big down move yesterday. Remember when I was with you on Tuesday, it was a little bit peculiar because we already saw the rolling over of interest rates, yet the US dollar remained resilient at that point. Today, 
we're seeing something a bit different. Now all of a sudden we're at kind of the lows of um, the last couple of weeks for the US dollar. That has helped support commodities. Notice this big move that gold has had. When I was with you on Tuesday, I mentioned how it might struggle to get through that moving average, particularly if the US dollar remained strong. Well, the US dollar rolled over. Gold took that opportunity to surge right through that moving average. Now remember, I have an iron condor going on gold that expires tomorrow, and we are going to take max gain on that. This is actually perfect territory where we ended up with it. Didn't know it at the time, but that's where it ended up. Uh, I did have a little bit of a panic right there on the 29th of September as it looked like gold was gonna take out those previous lows, but I stayed the course, and sometimes that patience is exactly what your trade requires. And in this case, we are ending up almost smack dab in the immediate middle of where our sold strikes are on both the upside and the downside. So congratulations to those of you that might have also done that iron condor trade. Gold's looking a little bit healthier here. Now, it still doesn't look as good as what we see with oil. Oil is just uh, relentless to the upside. Looks awesome. We concentrated on oil and oil-related securities in my Monday top-down trend trading class here this week, as that has been an area that has garnered more and more strength as time has gone on. But you know, this is a beautiful-looking chart here. Um, we're at 95 and rising on the intermediate line, which is basically as strong as Bitcoin, just to put that into context, right? And you all have been hearing how strong Bitcoin has been here lately as we're up there at about 57,000 all of a sudden uh, on Bitcoin. But oil has basically been just as strong as Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, from that perspective, there has been the willingness to take on risk in this market. So it's been a little bit of a different market pullback that we've experienced where there has been some key risk assets that have been willing to be bid up here. So um, the bulls are not dead out there. Yeah, they had to kind of give way to the bears for a little bit because we just got done with seven months in a row of upside behavior throughout the month, throughout the summer months of 2021. But I never got the impression that the bulls were dead. Uh, and part of that is just witnessing the risk taking temperature through commodities and through Bitcoin. So, um, We'll see where, where that leads us as we head into the end of the year. In terms of the, um, the, 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 the securities on the top rung here, more of our stock-related securities, talked about preferred stocks here today in class and a reminder that they oftentimes act like bonds, right? They have some elements of both stocks and bonds embedded in them, but their, their securities do act more like bonds than like stocks from my perspective. And so it's not a surprise to see that they had those oversold cluster signals at about the exact same time that TLT did, in other words, the long US government bonds, and have been rallying here in the last week or so uh, out of those oversold conditions. Preferred stocks actually look a little bit stronger than bonds as we are now back above that falling moving average. So that's some good move there out of preferred stocks. Remember, a lot of those ones in PFF come directly from the financial sector. So I think they benefited a little bit more so here recently as the financial sector has done better uh, on a comparative basis than a lot of other sectors out there. So I think they're kind of getting a little bit more positive vibrations there uh, as well this time around. Um, when it comes to some of the markets around the world, you can see that the EEM, while it was not up as much as EFA today, because it's been a little bit more resilient here in the last couple of weeks, we're actually back above that moving average, a 30-day moving average on EEM. So that's a positive sign there. Remember, a lot of Chinese stocks have really stabilized here recently, including Alibaba and uh, Pinduoduo, JD.com, and some of those that were really falling out of favor uh, here just a couple of months ago. So I think that's helped EEM stabilize as China is still the most important market within EEM, uh, whereas uh, EFA still has a ways to go to get above its moving average. As mentioned before, United States is back above there, which is a good sign. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sectors now. And from a sector perspective, the big story is what I've mentioned in the intro, which is it didn't matter where you were at today in the United States, you saw success. This is a very rare day where all sectors were up over 1%. That does not happen very often. Usually you have some laggards. You know, Usually it's a market that's roaring to the upside with the cyclicals leading the way, but the defensive kind of holding back. Today, it didn't matter. 
The defensives were were rocking it today as well, right? Healthcare was up 1.4% today. Staples were up 1.1%. Utilities were up 1.2%. And real estate was up 1.4%. Now, part of that down below here with utilities and real estate might be a reaction to what I mentioned before about interest rates, right? Interest rates have fallen three or four days in a row. That helps support utilities and REITs. We just got done talking about uh, utilities and REITs here in my dividend growth investing classes the last couple of weeks. So as they were selling off, they became more attractive to us, not less attractive. So we're enjoying the rebound now in those areas. Financials generally are at a disadvantage when rates roll over as they have the last three days. But I think right now the financials have the, uh, have the benefit of having um, all of those big banks like Bank of America reporting their earnings here this week. So Bank of America came out and did quite well, as I mentioned before. Look at that move on Bank of America. We're at three-month highs all of a the sudden there. And then also I noticed BlackRock had a great earnings report here earlier this week. BLK, not at three-month highs, but back above that moving average. I know Morgan Stanley had a nice report here today, up 2.5% as well. Um, and so there were a number of financials that reported earnings this week. So despite some pressures from interest rates this week, I think that the overwhelming positive attitude towards the financials earnings allowed them to focus on the earnings reports and not focus on the fact that interest rates have been falling. So a very unique environment in which we found all 11 sectors up over 1% today. And the only, um, the only two, um, actually there's three sectors that have a pink background, but the two more concerning ones with the dark pink background are going to be communications and healthcare. They're still well below their falling moving averages, whereas we do have discretionary continuing to build upon itself. Remember, Tesla's been in a very strong upward ascent here lately. Take a look at Tesla's chart all of a sudden. There's not maybe as much buzz about Tesla right now as there have been at previous times uh, in the last couple of years where uh, it just seems like it captured the market's imagination. Right now, the market's got other things to think about, but Tesla is quietly behind the scenes just crushing it stock price wise and that's really helping XLY. Remember Tesla is one of the three most important components within XLY along with Amazon and Home Depot. So I think Tesla is the story behind discretionary and then energy as stated previously is benefiting from those ultra strong oil prices right there. So a great day across the board. Now, technology is one of those areas that I still have a bit of a question mark about, which brings us into today's trade idea, which, as I hinted at previously, was on Oracle. Now, you guys will recall that on Tuesday, I did a bullish swing trading idea at a time when the markets were not as bullish, right? I didn't know in advance that we were going to have the best day for the stock market since March 5th when I placed that trade on Tuesday on scientific games and I was explaining the philosophy of um, uh, you know your 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 uh, your 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 tell in the poker game, right? I was talking about uh, rounders and the cracking open of the Oreo, and I was mentioning how you know scientific games SGMS was up on Tuesday on the day that the stock market was down, and sometimes that's a poker tell that it wants to go a bit higher. And so you know you don't see it here because I don't have my show trades on. I'll click that on real quick. But we got in real quick on Tuesday on Scientific Games as a bullish upside performer. For some reason, those those arrows are not popping on here uh, right now. I'm not sure why that is. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds. This is taking a little bit longer than normal, so I don't know why that is. Let me just click into margin, see if that'll do it. 
No, it's not coming up for some reason. But uh, you guys know the, the, the deal. We got in here and uh, we got out today. So that's the good news. And, and for those of you that are premium members, you get the screenshots and all that via Telegram. So that was a rare example of a swing trade that worked perfectly for us where we're in on one day and we're out 48 hours later, which is just awesome. So we locked in max gain on scientific games. We were willing to fade the market that day. The market was down. We didn't know it was going up, but we saw that there was a stock within the market that, oh, there it goes, finally. And now if I come on over here to Oracle, you can kind of see that it's doing the opposite of that, right? Today, the stock market had an epic upward move Yet for some reason, Oracle was down 1% today. And so uh, we did short sell this particular company. Now this one might be a little bit more aggressive because you can see that, um, that Oracle um, is an outperforming security here, right? And that was a little bit different. With Scientific Games, it was an outperforming security and it was a bullish trade for us. With Oracle, this is a bearish trade that I did here today, but it is a market outperformer. So this one might not be as good of a setup as I had on Tuesday. Nonetheless, that same kind of you know poker tell mindset is here where the market had an eruption today, yet Oracle completely sat it out. It was one of you know less than 25 stocks or whatever it was in the S&P 500 that did not go up. In fact, this was a pretty ugly day for Oracle. A 1% move to the downside causing a bearish engulfing candle here. Not only that, but you'll notice down below that we have a bearish near-term divergence here that is in play as well as we have a uh, a peak in the blue line here on the on the 8th of October and we have a follow-up high which is lower so a lower high on the blue line on the 13th and the two candles associated with those two days are this one right here and this one right here in other words price continued to go up at a time when there was wear and tear on the underlying indicator here so I uh, thought we would use this as an example of a compare and contrast of what I did on Tuesday. And now let's see if we can fade the market again when everybody is exceptionally bullish to the upside. Let's see if we can kind of sell the rips here a little bit by uh, short selling Oracle. And of course the trade was already done earlier today and I sent out those uh, screenshots and you know uh, execution details to those of you that are premium members uh, via the Telegram app, which always gives you an opportunity to get into the trades before everybody else that's just watching the free uh, videos there as, as a slight perk to those of you that are part of our premium community. So basically what I did here was I short sold Oracle, you can see I've got my stop loss a little bit above today's high, and then that would mean that our one for one reward risk relationship would bring us down to, um, you know, approximately just above 93 there. So we'd have to kind of cross back into this candle that started off that bearish near term divergence. So we'll see if that plays out. If it doesn't, it won't hurt my feelings because our portfolio is mostly bullish. And so I kind of like to have a smattering of bearish trades in there as a little bit of a balancing act, knowing that if they fail on us, that the rest of our portfolio will continue to benefit as it did here today. So that's what I had for you here today. I hope you got some benefit out of the analysis and the trade setup. If you did, uh, I just kindly request that you click like for me there on Twitter. Again, the last trade idea was a pretty good one, in and out in just two days. I hope that's worth your five seconds of your day. I think for a lot of you, it is. For the rest of you, I would encourage you to get in the habit of doing that to help uh, you know, encourage David and I to continue to do these free videos if that is what you desire going forward. So again, uh, remember that David is out of the office. Uh, he will not be doing these videos for the next couple of weeks. And so uh, there's going to be fewer videos. I'll continue to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but the other days uh, will just go kind of dark during those weeks until David gets back from his vacation. So this is my opportunity to wish you all a fantastic weekend. For those of you that are premium uh, members, be on the lookout for the updates to the stock selector tool and the sector selector tool tomorrow afternoon. I'll send out a telegram when those are updated, and then I'll be back in action with my two classes on Monday, and then I'll be back on this video here on Tuesday like normal. So uh, with that, I want to wish you all the best of success with your trades and your investments. Goodbye for now.